past seven to nine months sitting at home, you haven't had to pay gasoline in your car very much, and you've had a whole bunch of time to yourself instead of time commuting, time extra with your family, time to get extra work done, whatever you want that extra time for. Those are two things that this car addresses because, hey, vaccines are coming. Things are getting better. And we're all going to go back to a new normal very soon. This is a car that you should consider. If the two things that you really noticed during this whole process was I've had more time and I really haven't had to pay for much gas and those things matter to you, that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're just joining us for the very first time, we go live every weekday at two o'clock. We're going to get to the content of this video at the three minute mark. We're going to let our live audience jump in here for a little bit. And then we're going to talk about that car. We're going to debunk some of the myths that are talked about with PHEVs. If you don't know what a PHEV is, we're going to talk about that. And uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of things related to this car and why it may or may not be the right car for you. All right, real quickly, let's just show you how to join us live. If you've never done this before, uh, today on a PHEV, we tend to have a few less people than normal, but we've had as many as uh, 700 some odd people earlier this week uh, at a single hour while we were looking at this. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to talk to you about everything we can. All right, let me just jo show you how to join us. Go to our YouTube page. You're probably already there, but you just have to search for Brantford Kia. When you search there, you just refresh the page at exactly 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That's what I'm doing right now. And you should see our live video right there. So today's live video is right there. You see it says live. If you don't see it there, just click this videos tab. It'll be the first video with this video live video tab as well. So we're going to click that. We're going to watch an ad for, oh, no ad. Oh, that was good. We skipped the ad. I'm sure my boss doesn't get paid as much, but that's all right. All right, some of my regulars are reminding me, get the keys. And they're saying hi to Teddy Bear. We've got our Teddy Bear over there. That is a very important piece of our demonstration today. We'll get to that a little bit later. And the reason I just made that a little bit bigger is because I can see your comments across there. All right, let's talk about a couple things. First of all, um, what's going on in our life right now? We talked about earlier this week the, well, not the Sorrento, the Kia minivan. It might be Sorrento. It might be something else. It has no name right now. We, we have that vehicle on order. I'm not sure if that was clear in the video, but that vehicle is already on order. So if you want the new minivan, you can literally order it right now. We can go over all the specs with you. We can talk about all that. Uh, same thing with the Kia Stinger, 2022 Kia Stinger. So that in Canada is the refresh Stinger that you go, you've all been asking about. We have that on order as well. So you can order that. Uh, we're trying to get more K5s. Uh, in the big news in K5, Steltos and Telluride, they've all become finalists in their class for uh, Car of the Year in their classes. And if they win those, then they can go for overall Car of the Year. The Kia Stinger won that uh, the other year. Uh, the Forte was a finalist for overall car of the year. It won small cars. So a lot of cars there. I think Celto should win. I think K5 should win. Uh, tell you right, I want to see what it's up against. It uh, did very well the previous year. So I'm not sure how that got back in there, but we'll find that out soon. All right, three minutes in, three and a half, oh, three minutes and 15 seconds in. Today, we're going to talk about this car right here, this little unassuming car that might be perfect for you. So what is it? It is a PHEV. That is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Now, not every Nero is a plug-in hybrid. Some Neros are just a regular hybrid. Uh, we're going to sp talk specifically about a plug-in hybrid. A regular hybrid never has to be plugged in. Uh, we'll talk about some of the features of that in this video. But this one's a plug-in hybrid. And I really genuinely believe that more people need to know about these vehicles and they need to understand them. And we're going to talk about some of the... This is the most misunderstood vehicle that I've talked about uh, People come to me with all kinds of questions that aren't uh, valid questions for what this is, or they, or they make excuses of the reason it won't be good for them. Now, I'm cool if this isn't the vehicle for you, but I think you should decide if it's the vehicle for you or not based on fact. Now, somebody just asked me a really great question. What color is this? And I forgot the name of it. So let me just jump in here. We'll show you what we're looking at. This is the EX Premium in front of me. We have two EX Premium. We have SX Touring. Those are the two plug-in hybrids. You can see those fuel economy numbers are pretty eye-popping there. Uh, we'll talk about horsepower, why that 139 is going to feel like a lot more. And uh, really quickly, I don't remember what color this is. I know it's blue. It is. It is not this blue, which is the ocean blue. It is the... No, it's not gravity blue. It is the ocean blue. Excuse me. It is ocean blue. So it looks very different on the screen than it does in person. Uh, seems to be popular. I saw on Instagram, it seems like every time I post this color on a Nero, a lot of people really like it. I'm going to be really honest... It doesn't stand out to me personally, and I'm definitely in the minority here. A lot of people really like this color. So we'll jump back to our models over here, 
And uh, Jasmine and some of the others have reminded me, don't forget the keys. And I already have forgotten them. They're in the car. Seoul also won World Urban Car of the Year Award. Yes, yeah, Seoul won lots of awards, but we're talking the Canadian Car of the Year Award. That's what we were talking about earlier. So, um, okay, so we're going to go through this car. So what are we doing in this video? We're going to spend 30 minutes on this video. If this video is longer than 30 minutes, we've gone off topic at that 30-minute mark. We're going to talk about PHE myths, how they work, what it works, where it's good, where it's not as good. And we're going to go through, we're going to show you the driver's environment. We're going to show you the trunk. We're going to show you the back seat. I'm going to hop in, show you the space in there. We're going to go really in depth in this car. And we're going to do that on a car every single day, every single weekday, uh, at two o'clock live on YouTube. So that's what we do here. Okay, here we go. Here's the key. Now, one thing uh, all of you know, this is uh, many of our regulars know, this is the new style key that we have on all of our Kias. Uh, what people like about it is that we used to put buttons across here. Some people would find that those buttons were accidentally hit. I never had a problem with that myself, but on these keys, we don't have that issue. They, nobody ever hits these accidentally. So this is a pretty cool ergonomically designed key. I can lock the door right there. What's cool about this is even when it's in my pocket, you can find that diagonal button and hit it through your pants pocket or your jacket pocket. You can feel that. Uh, so if you walk away from your car and you want to know if it's locked, you can still reach it and tell even without taking the key out of your pocket. Now, why do I talk about not taking the key out of your pocket? Because a key like this does not have to come out of your pocket. You just throw it in there and you never have to touch it because the whole car is has what's called a proximity key. The whole car works with it just in proximity. So here we go. You're going to look at the door handle. That is where we talk about proximity key. You tap that once, uh, just the driver's door opens. You double tap it, all they open, all the doors open. However, you can also set it up for just the driver's door to open. We're going to hop in there in one second. PHEV has a little extra door right here. We're going to pop that open. That is your electric port. Over here is exactly the same as a gas car. Uh, I think this one I have to pop from the inside. Yeah, so I have to release that from inside. That's your gas door there. If you never, ever, ever plug this car in, it's going to get incredible mileage, and you can drive it across the country just like you would any other regular car. You never have to plug this car in, and you're already going to get probably double the mileage of a car in its class. So a small crossover is the class that this is in, and you can probably use half the fuel that you already have if it's never plugged in. So why do we plug it in? Well, if you plug this car in, you can get around 40 kilometers of pure electric range. Here's myth number one. People say to me, oh, my commute is 60 kilometers, so it doesn't make sense for me to get that car. And I would say you're wrong. So here's the problem that people assume. People assume that, oh, you know, if I'm going to run out of charge, it's just not good for me. Well, here's the thing. If you drive 60 kilometers in a day, or let's just say 60 kilometers to work, the first 40 kilometers or any section of that 40 kilometers, and I say 40 kilometers, it, it ranges. And you'll see in this car when we talk about that. But that first 40 kilometers is pure electric range. That is inexpensive transportation. So you get that, and then it switches to a hybrid mode. So you still have electric and gas mixing the entire time, and your fuel efficiency is, like I said, after that point, is like half of regular gas. So it's like getting the first 40 kilometers on, I won't say free, but dirt cheap. And then after that, you're still using half the fuel you used to use in your other side, in your regular crossover, um, and it becomes a very, very, very efficient vehicle. So when I started off on the top of the uh, episode or the top of the video here, we talked about if you've been sitting at home, this will save you uh, fuel costs. And it absolutely will because all of your around town driving in this car, you're going to do pretty much all of it on electric. Even heading to work and back, you're going to do a lot of it on electric. And when you don't, you're going to switch between gas and electric. And the car will do that automatically and it can sort of self-charge a little bit and then give you some of that electricity back. Uh, it's a cool system. It works well. We'll show you how it works in a second. However, the other benefit with a PHEV, you're thinking, why would I go with a plug-in hybrid as opposed to just a hybrid? Well, the plug-in hybrid has the ability to put what I call the green plates on the front, the electric vehicle plates on the front. What does that do for you? Remember we talked for sitting at home and you've had all that extra time with your family or time to get more work done? Well, now you can go in the HOV lanes. That is the high occupancy vehicle lanes here in Ontario. And you can ride without a passenger in those lanes. And if you've ever driven an HOV lane in traffic around here, it is like half the time to get to the major cities from where we are. So that is a huge feature as well. The other thing you get with those green plates is because it's a green plated car, you get the government rebate. So we showed you the price earlier, just down here, of $35,995. 
$2,500 rebate from the federal government is uh, in effect. It's been told it's going to last. We weren't sure how much longer it's going to last after this March, but it's going to continue to last. So you already get fuel savings. You get $2,500 government rebate, and you get a whole bunch of other things. Now let's talk about what happens in the driver's seat right here. Okay, first of all, hopping in, we're going to show you the power seats and the other stuff in this car later. What I want to do is start off with the dash. Instead of like I normally do, I put the car to the on position, but I don't start the car. I'm going to fully start the car here. So foot on the brake, car starts. One of the best dashes we have anywhere in Kia. Can you get an extension cord with a charging cord? I uh, will talk about that. Gary, if you can stick around to the 30 minute mark, I promise we'll deal with that because that's a complicated answer. Um, simple answer, yes, but we'll talk about that. So here we go. There's your electric range. You can see I don't have a ton of fuel in this car and there is my gasoline range. So let's talk about that for a second. You have gasoline engine that mixes with the um, electric motors at all times. So even when that 40 kilometers of pure electric range is, the next 120 kilometers you get is still a hybrid, mixing gas electric, still getting half the fuel. That 40 kilometers of electric range, um, you can use it whenever you want. Now, what I mean by that is, there's a little button down here, which is confusing to people who don't understand the terminology. EV means that you can use the electric vehicle range um, uh, right away. So you put it in EV mode, electric vehicle mode or you can choose hybrid electric vehicle. What that means is you're gonna mix gas and electric vehicle, and you're gonna save the pure electric range for whenever you want. So here's an example right now. If we live in Brantford like I do, and you're driving to downtown Toronto, downtown Toronto typically has a lot of traffic. Uh, it is most efficient to be in an in a EV if you're doing stop and go traffic, right? That's more efficient than uh, running the gasoline engine at all. So in that case, you might wanna save your electric range for there. Well, then you just put it in the hybrid mode while you get there. And when you get to Toronto, you can put an EV mode and you've got 40 kilometers to go around town in. Now, in the middle of the winter, this is a downfall to this car. This is why this car may not be right for you. You will run some gasoline engine. It uses the gasoline engine to create heat. So what I'm going to do is even though I'm inside and my boss is probably in the other room and I'm going to gas him out, I'm going to turn on the climate control right now. So we turned it on. It is set to 27 degrees. Instantly, the car started and my range dropped to 37 going to turn that off again. We're going to wait for a second. Climate system is now off. The vehicle's running indoors. It should turn off quickly. It's not. Okay, so we're just going to turn it off a second. It'll turn off in the next couple seconds here, but because I am indoors with the door shut, I'm going to turn it off here. So one thing to keep in mind, now I'm going to turn the car back on. Climate system's off. The car won't start. One thing to keep in mind is in the winter, the gasoline engine will run to create some heat. That's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Anytime you have a gasoline engine, you want it to run regularly. You want it to run every now and then. Uh, it has to be willing to start instantly. And of course, if you're creating heat, it has to create gas heat out of that gasoline engine. Now, you can do things to preserve your electric range, like using your heated steering wheel, heated seats. But it's okay if that gasoline engine runs. And keep in mind, you're still in a hybrid vehicle, which is probably about half the fuel use of a typical crossover in this class. So that's the compromise compared to an EV that you make is in the winter, you're going to use your hybrid system, not just your gasoline engine, but your hybrid system a little bit more than you would in the summertime where air conditioning is pretty good about coming through uh, mostly the EV side. And uh, certainly three seasons of the year, you're going to use your EV range and get a little bit more EV range out of it because of that. It's the one compromise that people think, oh, well, if in the winter I'm running a gasoline engine, well, yeah, I hear you. So, Let's look at fuel miles for a second. I don't think this car will show an accurate thing, but let's just see what it does show. Yeah, 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers. This car has been idling around. We have seen this for regular users of this car sitting around the 2 point whatever liters per 100 kilometers. That is an accurate. 2 to 3 liters per 100 kilometers is pretty accurate for a lot of our EV people, um, for people who drive them, not just sitting at the dealership idling, making sure it's nice and warm for the customer when they get here. And that is a really big savings for a lot of people you can see even if your vehicle gets 9.1 now that would be almost a third of the fuel use so instead of spending 60 bucks on gas you spend 20 so a lot going on here and the one other thing i'm going to show you is when i put this car into drive the engine's going to start one more time and i go over to sport mode if i tap into sport mode the tachometer changes and we're going to turn the car off again for a second just because i don't want to gas out my boss but the tachometer changes there and you have the ability to get some extra torque what do we know about electric motors they give you more torque so First myth, let's just go through the myths here. If you have a PHEV and you drive more than 40 kilometers, it's not for you. 
totally disagree. You're going to get the first 40 kilometers all the time, no charge or not charge, very, very little cost. And then you're going to go to a hybrid, uh, which is a great fuel savings. Second myth, um, it's not going to save me any time or anything else. Uh, remember, you can take the HOV lanes. It will save you time. Third thing, some people think that 139 uh, horsepower is not a lot of power. Well, electric motors have a lot of torque. Torque is the pushing power you feel. This drives very much like an electric car, and it will uh, give you extra torque in there, 195 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a lot of torque uh, compared to, for instance, in the Seltos, uh, that is the uh, torque of the high-spec engine, and you're getting that smooth EV torque out of this car no matter whether you're running electric or gas, because it's always blending at least some electric and gas. So those are a couple things. The other thing we're gonna talk about is plugging things in, but before we do that, we're gonna show you the dash here, just because I wanna show you this car. Uh, the light's turned off in here because it's a motion sensor light and then it's behind a truck and it can't see me. Over here, AM, FM stereo, uh, nice stereo, and you've got uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So this one still needs the cord, but again, you've got navigation in there through your cell phone. Gonna turn the car to the off position. Actually, we are in the off position. Let's turn the climate system on just for a second so you can see the buttons here, how they work. Automatic climate control, it is a, let me just show you. Uh, there we go, hit the button. It is a dual zone automatic climate control system. So you can set the temperatures here. And if I wanna uh, change my passenger side temperature to a different temperature, I can do that. So you have a dual zone climate system. Most of our EVs do not have that, but the PHEV does. Another benefit here is what I can do is hit the driver only mode. Now, in our electric vehicles, not really worth doing. You don't save enough range to make a difference. In our hybrid and PHEV, that driver only mode can really make a difference. When you hit that driver only mode, it turns the passenger everything off. So heat, cooling, venting, everything, it turns it off and it directs only the power to you. Now, when you're trying, once the car is warmed up, all of that heat that's in the engine, if you're only pushing it out to a part of the car, you're gonna save that heat. If less of it will be moving through the car, you'll be able to use electric motors even more and save even more fuel. Down here, I'm just gonna turn the LED light on just because it is dark in here. You've got a USB port over on the right. Whoops, let me see if I can get in focus. Let's get the gear shift out of the way. USB port over on the right, USB port over on the left, and Siri's listening to me, which we don't need. Okay, and USB port over here, or sorry, 12 volt port over there. Uh, in down here is the dirty right now, but a wireless charge pad. You drop your phone there, it will wirelessly charge, which is quite nice to have. You have a dual clutch transmission, not a CVT transmission, which is kind of nice to have in these. Uh, sort of a sporty style uh, transmission that also gets great fuel efficiency. And you've got, really important in this type of car, heated seats and heated steering wheels. So again, I'm not saying ever turn the heat off in your car, but again, if using heat use, runs a gasoline engine a little bit more, instead of going to 23, which might be comfortable for you, maybe you can go down to 21 and use a little extra rump roaster and it looks just steering wheel heater, and that will keep you just as comfortable. And of course, that actually saves fuel in this car because the gasoline engine will run less. Over here, smart cruise control. So not just cruise control, but you've got the smart cruise control. What does that do? Keeps the distance between you and the cars in front of you. You've also got lane keeping assist. It sees the lane markers, and it keeps the car centered in lane. If you're doing a road trip on this car, this is the EV to road trip in uh, because you're just going to stop for gas like you always do. You're going to get phenomenal fuel efficiency and... Uh, Something like this with the uh, with a lane keeping assist it's going to keep you centered in the lane. It's going to make a long trip way easier, way more comfortable. All right, we're already 18 minutes in. I'm going to turn the car off for a sec. Turn the light on on the outside. You do a blind spot detection. I don't think I pointed that out. We'll show you that as well later. Uh, I just want to turn the light on in my room here by backing up so the motion sensor sees me. There we go. And there we go. Actually, why don't we take a quick look at the lights here? Lights were redesigned on these cars for a 2020 model year. So when you turn the brake lights on, the center lights here are going to light up, but so does the glowing circle that you see there. All of them become brighter again, which is kind of nice. We'll show you headlights in a minute here. All right, let's see if there's any questions so far where I'm headed next. I want to talk about charging the car. I want to show back seat and trunk space, and I want to go through that. Uh, costs about a dollar to charge the Nero PHEV in Ontario, off peak times, maybe a dollar fifty if you add delivery and other charges. Uh, so yeah, while I'm here, if you want to talk about charging, uh, let's just quickly go to Kia's website. If you go to kia.ca and you go to, uh, I don't know how to find it the quick way, but this is how I'm going to find it. Hybrid and electric vehicles. So I just click vehicles, hybrid electric, right here, green vehicles. Click on that. If you scroll down on this page, debunking some myths, which is great. I guess we're kind of doing that today. Keep scrolling down. Oh, where's that? This is new. Time to plug in. Wait a minute. Where'd it go? They changed this for 2021. Uh, basics. 
There used to be a calculator on here. Oh, no. Oh, Kia, you and I are going to have to talk. Kia can. Okay, there used to be a calculator on there. Uh, calculator used to con used to tell you the electric fuel. It was there last week. We were showing an EV to someone. They were looking at the calculator. So it is very cheap to run these cars in electric. Uh, let's take your questions through again. Somebody asked a great question of what about the 2021 models? The Nero, I think, basically because of, um, because of uh, what do you call it, coronavirus, had a delay in production. And uh, the current model year is the 2020. Um, it came in late. That At one point, we had the 2019s in stock when we had the 2020s last year. So again, it's just running a little bit longer. Uh, it's still a very current model year, but it is the 20, labeled as the 2020. Uh, da, 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 da. Peter may give you a better idea. You guys are talking, Alberto. But not normal in the USA. Gary's got a question. Can you can the extension cord? Okay, yeah, we were talking about the extension cord. Uh, we're going to get into charging in a second, and I'll tell you practically, and then I'll tell you realistically. Uh, HOV lane. I get just the HOV lane in LA, yeah. Jasmine's our uh, California friend who reminds me that it's warmer in the other parts of the world right now. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. So charging network, first of all, I have a charging station right over here. How does this car charge? Pretty simple. Let me just show you. You uh, un open this up like that. It's sort of sealed and watertight. In my case, I'm going to turn my charging station on, and I'm going to take my cord, which is coiled up nicely. I'm going to walk over here, and this is how you charge the cord. You literally just line it up, click it in, it clicks, you're done. Now what's going to happen over here is I'm going to look for a little light on the dash, and come on, light. That's not the red light we're looking for. The green light's what we're looking for. It might be already charged, and that's why it's not going to do it. Yeah. So car's already charged. Normally, if it's not charged, you'll see a little green light there lighting up, and you're just going to make sure it's charged. Now, I just want to make sure car is off. Yeah, so it would charge. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn the charging station on. I turned it off. Now it may not work. There we go. Charging station's off. So that's why I always tell people, Make sure that little green light comes on because if it doesn't, then you've got an issue and it should come on or let's just unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, now it's locked to the car because I, I've angered it. Turn the charge station on. Where's my key? Oh, the key's in my pocket still. Unlock, unlock. There we go. Charge station just made a click. There we go. Car's on. So there we go. You can see the lights are blinking there. That was our charge station issue, not a car issue. Uh, I turned it on and off. But there you go. You're going to make sure it charges when that last light stops blinking and it's all green. It'll be fully charged. And so, again, that's the charge station. Normally what you do, you walk in, click it, and that's it. Yeah, the real deal charging. Normally this doesn't happen. That was, to be fair, that was my error with our charge station. We had a different vehicle here charging, and I think I turned it off and tweaked it instead of left it back on. Anyways, um, so what you do is you plug into a charge station. Now, you don't need a charge station. This car comes with, in the trunk, a charge cord. Let me show you the trunk for a second real quick. There is a charging cord right there that plugs into a regular, I don't know if you can see it here, a regular plug just like your cell phone would plug in. So I don't recommend getting a charge station for this car. I think for most of you, you are going to be sitting there and having plenty of time to charge this car at home. If you want to spend some money and get a charge station, you can. If you want to go to a public charge station, you can. Many of them are free. However, charging at home like this is probably overkill for most people's driving habits, especially since you're never going to be stranded, right? So what I recommend, again, walk over and look at how easy it is to just plug this car in. This is your 40 kilometers fuel stop. Oh, I locked the car. <laughs> this is real world charging. There we go. So this is how you charge the car. It's as simple as this. The gas stop for 40 kilometers of range every single night, you do that. Now you've got 40 kilometers of electricity, and that's it. So people always talk about gas stops. They're inconvenient compared to electric stop, especially when this is you're doing this in your home, right? So that's a nice thing, and you don't have to plug it into a charging station, and it works very well. I drive a full electric vehicle, and I still don't have a charging station in my house because I can get plenty of charge through the regular one. Somebody asked about charging cord or extension cords. I don't recommend – Kia does not recommend using a charge cord – with the level one charger. Having said that, I know several of our EV buyers are doing that. They have not had any issues if they buy a heavy duty enough charge cord. Um, I would certainly limit the distance you wanna spread that. Um, so again, I don't recommend it. Kia doesn't recommend it. 
but many people are finding that if they have a heavy duty charge or heavy duty extension cord, they haven't had any issues with it. So I have to be very careful about what I actually recommend with my Kia badge on. And I have to be clear that I don't recommend it, but James, our salesperson, has an electric vehicle. He charges it all the time through a charge cord. So there are examples of people doing it out there, and you can talk to them about their success or not success with that. All right, one of the other things I want to show real quick, some people think that electric vehicles have less cargo space. Now, when I first got a 2007 Toyota Camry Hybrid, it was the Motor Trend car of the year in 2007. Uh, it had a huge battery pack that took up a third of the trunk. This car does have a bigger battery than the regular hybrid, and it is buried underneath the floor back there. So you have a little bit of underfloor storage here, just a tiny bit there, and no underfloor storage underneath these floor mats back there. And that's because that's where an extra battery pack is on this car. However, you can see, fold the seats down. You could go pick up a dishwasher from a Home Depot or a Lowe's or something like that and slide it right in there. You don't really lose any cargo space in this vehicle. So that's a big benefit here. What I always do with my trunk space is I show teddy bear in there because if you're comparing vehicles, especially if you're comparing Kia vehicles, any video I've done where I've compared the trunk space, I throw teddy bear in here. And you can see his body is always pressed up against the back seat. You can see how much room he has. Uh, he's got a little bit of space, so I'd say more floor space than a Kia Soul. And uh, certainly a good height there as well. Teddy is fairly comfortable in the back of this car. It's going to be similar to maybe a Seltos, a little bit less, it feels like. I'm not sure. It's, this is a little bit wider car, I think, than the Seltos. Maybe it's not. Um, but yeah, you certainly have enough crossover type space back there. It looks a little cluttered with those mats and the owner's manuals and the charge cord in there. You take all that out. The one area compared to a regular Nero that you're losing, this one has a 12 volt battery in the back here. So uh, you can see it right there. So where a lot of cars, uh, Nero's have a little space there, you've got the opposite here. There we go. So we have somebody, a user saying he's used an extension cord on his and has no issues with it. Let's show rear seat space and then we'll uh, wrap up. I want to show some lighting at the end. Rear seat space is very good in this car. I keep locking it. I'm going to properly unlock the car now. If you, un if you lock this car, let me just explain what I'm doing. If I lock this car, which I did on the door, and don't open the driver's door, or sorry, if I unlock the car and don't open the driver's door, the whole car will lock. In other words, if I accidentally bump into that button with the key fob in my pocket and walk away and go to the store, it's like, hey, you didn't get in the car. I'm just going to lock the car to be safe. That's why it kept locking on me. So it's not the car, it's me. All right, so let's check out rear seat space here. You can see that you have a cargo cover here, which can be mounted in this car. It's a blind style car cargo cover. I'm going to leave it right there for a second because I can get my feet around that right now. And I want to show you the space in here. So let me show you how easy it is to get in and out of here. If you're an active lifestyle person, I feel like you go out with friends, you can take your stuff in this car. This is kind of a perfect car for that. It gives you a lot of space. So you can see it looks like a small car, a compact car, but you've got SUVs type space in here, like a lot of headroom. I'm about six feet tall. As we look around here, my feet are basically flat to the uh, um, seat here. They will be flat to the seat. If I move that cargo cover and can stretch my legs out just a little bit forward. Knee space, I've got a lot sitting behind a six-footer here. So you can get very comfortable back here and you can take your friends, even if they're adult friends, you've got plenty of trunk space. And did you see the roof rack on top? Now, one thing to keep in mind in the PHEV, you actually have better rear seats in the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle compared to the electric vehicle. Because the electric vehicle has a raised floor in the rear. So my seat... My feet are a little bit higher up in that uh, in this situation here. It'd be a little bit higher up because my feet are a little bit higher up. So you have a lot of space, just like the gasoline, uh, the regular hybrid. And then you've also got a lot of comfort here as well. Let's just flip around here. Oops, come on, camera. There we go. You can see there's venting back here as well. And again, so a lot of space, a lot of comfort, a good spot to stick your guests. And one of the reasons I really like it, it is a crossover with roof rails that come standard. And uh, any PHEV you get, you have a sunroof in this car. And roof rails. I'm a kayaker, a camper. Throw a roof box up there if you want a ton of cargo space. Four friends. You're going to get, you know, what, five liters per 100 kilometers, even with a roof box on, probably, depending on how much electricity you use. Uh, fun thing is, if you go camping to an electric site, you can get your 40 kilometers of electric range, and you can go to the beach and back. You can go all the time around the campground on pure electric power, and it costs you nothing because when you go camping with an electric site, you've already paid for the electricity. So that's literally free gas to tour around the town up to 40-ish kilometers a day. So that's kind of a cool way to go. All right, we are 30 minutes into this video. I'm gonna double check your questions. If you wanna see the headlights, I'll show those to you. You guys tell me if that's something you wanna see. Uh, if not, we can skip that as well. Let me just jump through. So for a college kid without garage access to charge, 
The Nero Hybrid make more sense than the Nero PHEV. Okay, great question. Nero Hybrid or Nero PHEV, if you can't charge, it depends. Um, if you can't charge, sure, go the hybrid. The Nero PHEV, in my opinion, is a better hybrid, although you do pay more for that uh, extra battery and those kinds of things. Uh, you don't have to charge this car ever. So if you're going to go to college for two years and you're going to go live your life after that and you have a place to plug this car in, uh, then certainly you're going to have some savings uh, beyond that. So I feel like the PHEV is the car to go to regardless. However, if you're definitely never going to plug this car in, then um, then yeah, maybe not. But you'd be surprised because keep in mind it plugs into a regular plug. You can visit a friend's house, get three hours charge there. You can go uh, you know home to mom and dad, get a regular charge there. So PHEV is a car that I would really consider if it's in your budget, even if you don't always plug in. Okay. Uh, somebody has a level two charger for their car. Yep, that works great. Uh, HOV lanes are helpful. Yes, HOV lanes. Again, the green plates, you can use the HOV lanes. Good that you show the charging plug once in the car. It cannot come unless you unlock the car with the key. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. So the, that's one of the benefits is I can set the car charging cord to unplug at any time. So my electric vehicle, when I plug in here at work, anybody can unplug my uh, car and put the car that they need in. But if I'm out um, with my uh, car cord that's in the in the back there. I go to a friend's house overnight. It's kind of a sketchy neighborhood. I plug in my car. People could steal my charge cord if it wasn't locked to the car. And you can lock it to the car uh, while it's doing that. And same thing if you go to a charging station. You can set it to lock to the car just while it's charging. As soon as the car is fully charged, it will unlock and people can take that out and use that. So lots of uh, charge station etiquette there. Takes about six hours to charge from home on 110. That's about right. Da -da 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 -da. Kona has a smaller trunk. Absolutely. The Kona is a smaller vehicle. How many miles does it go on one charge, electric power only? So kilometers, this one's showing 40 kilometers. That's about what it's rated for. Somebody said to me they got 65 kilometers of pure electric range out of that car. That's by far the highest I've ever seen. Typically, you see 40. I've seen 44 in there. And you will have a little bit less in the winter, 33, 32 sometimes, uh, depending on what you get, of pure electric. Somebody said test drove a, uh, where were we? Test drove a Nero PHEV today. How do I go to sport mode? Did not understand how that is sport mode. Yeah, okay. So sport mode. Let me show you how to do that. That's a great question. Sport mode is pretty simple in this car. I don't want to do it again because I'm indoors. Uh, so I'll do it with the car off, not on. Uh, just turning the, didn't hit the brake pedal. Just turn the car to the on position. Everything's coming to life. So sport mode. Most of our cars have a drive mode button. You think you would see it right here. I don't know why they didn't put right there. I feel like they could have. Um, so if you go into drive, whoops. It won't do it unless I have the car on. So you know what? We're going to put the car on. We will start the car. Oh, what am I having going wrong here? What did I do? Oh, you know why we can't go in? Here's why I can't get into gear. Yeah, you can't drive when the vehicle's plugged in. If you see that here, I put my foot on the brake. I can't do anything with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug the vehicle real quick, and then I'll show you how to go into sport mode. It's a great question. I feel like I should know all this stuff. Didn't unlock all the doors. That's the way this car is set up. All the doors have to be unlocked to come out. There we go. Car's unplugged. Just going to hang up my charge cord here. I'm going to turn off the charger just because somebody will say I should have done that earlier. Come on. There we go. Charge is off. Okay. I'm going to shut the door here. Back to the original question. How do you put it in sport mode? So again, car's not turned on or not started just to the on position. Um, put the car into drive. So we're in drive right now. You tap it this way. Now from here, you can manually shift the gears, but just tapping it this way, let me just show you without starting the car, just tapping it to the side, puts you in sport mode. You get this cool speedometer, looks like that. The S over there. Now, if I start playing with the gear shift, there's gift one, shift one, and it'll go to number two as well if the car started and I'm driving. So again, just get to sport mode, no sport button on this car, put in drive, tap it towards the driver, and that's how you do it. So. Real quick, we've got about 32 people on right now. I'd love it if you could all hit the like button. I'm trying to get to 30 likes on every video. We've only got 13. I didn't ask for likes today, and it seems like that matters. So uh, if you want to hit the like button, that would help us out. going to go back to your questions here. How many miles does it go on one electric charge only? I already answered that, 40 kilometers or so. It varies a little bit. Uh, car is charging. Yeah, you guys knew what's going on. Is a Celtos PHEV coming? Not that I've heard. Um, I would, would not be surprised if any of our vehicles or all of our vehicles had a PHEV option in future years, but I would expect a redesign before that happens. 
Nero width and Celto's width is, oh, one millimeter difference in the Nero Celto. There you go. Uh, the engine will charge the battery if the battery is low. So anyways, you don't need to charge it. Yeah, so let's just talk real quick about that. Um, regular charge, that pure electric charge, don't rely on the engine to charge that. Let me just show you really quickly in the dash. The electric charge itself, um, it shows really clearly in the dash what's going on. So remember I said this car has electric range and then it goes to gas and electric. The bluish color there is the electric range. When that runs out, then you have this white and that white will fill and empty based on you driving and that will always fill and empty. It will, it will be done just by driving. Whereas the blue, really, you have to plug in. I, I've heard people say that if you put it in sport mode, it could charge. And that could be true. I have to check the owner's manual. Um, but 99.9% .9 of people are charging this blue section by plugging in. And then the white section is where it gives you that regular hybrid charging itself, uh, depleting itself through the regenerative braking and that kind of thing. I have one of these. It's amazing. If you want to boost the charge, kick it into sport while driving. Yeah. So, again, that charge can boost it a little bit. But um, that's not something I'm going to recommend to people as... Um, the way to charge so uh you're gonna plug in to get the proper charge otherwise you're again you're buying this to save fuel that's really the best way to save fuel so just so i'm clear on that okay anything else that i missed here da, 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 da. Uh, so it can recoup all the way beyond white charge lines to blue lines yeah those white charge lines that we just showed the white charge lines are just when this car is a hybrid so any hybrid car never has to be plugged in let me just get rid of the background so you can see me. A hybrid car never has to be plugged in. Uh, what it does is it drives along. The engine will regenerate some of that electric power. And in this case, just that white bars. And as you brake, it'll generate electric power. It'll use that power when you're accelerating, when you're doing various things. So there's times where it makes more sense to use electric. That blue side, essentially, it's going to charge only by uh, plugging in. So that's the short answer there. All right, let's go back to the car. Couple more questions that just came in. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, I think that we got that. So 25 miles, yeah, 25-ish miles is 40 kilometers. That's what we were talking about with the electric range. All right, I think we're gonna leave it like that. So I really highly recommend PHEV comes on your list. Now in Ontario, there are very few dealers that stock this car. We are one of them. We are happy to sell you an EV, a PHEV. We've got used EVs. We've got used. Um, uh, we usually have used hybrids in stock as well. And we've got new, of course, as well. So if you're looking for an EV PHEV, that'd be, uh, we want to be your dealer. And yeah, somebody says, please smash the like button. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Most of my journeys are no more than 30 miles, and I find I really have to fuel with petrol. There you go. Peter, is there a shortage of some models in the Kia due to COVID? Um, the Nero was the one model um, that had a seemingly a production delay a year ago. Uh, right now, our problem at Brantford Kia is we're selling more cars than we can get in. We're very successful even through this COVID times. Uh, so we are seeing some K5 uh, shortages. I wouldn't say full shortages, but uh, currently I don't have any on, in stock. Uh, we have some on order that are coming very soon. Uh, but yeah, we have a few cars that uh, right now we're selling very well. Telluride's always been a big seller, so we're having trouble keeping that in stock as well. Uh, I wouldn't say COVID is the issue, but we're certainly seeing, I uh, haven't yet seen any Sorento EX and EX Pluses. So once they start coming in, we'll see more of them. Uh, the Nero was that one car that, uh, the Celtos came out as a 2021 model in March of 2020, and the Nero was still running as a 2020 or 2019 model back then. So we had 19, 20, and 21s in stock, and the Nero is just going to continue on a little longer because of that uh, as a 2020 before the 2021s are released. So I haven't heard any 2021 information on this car, but I do have 2022 information on the Stinger and on the, um, on the new minivan. And that can be very confusing for some people. However, it's just the way it is. But all of these are our current cars. Whatever year they name them doesn't really matter. This is our current Nero. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be back. I've uh, got a Kia class coming up later today. Uh, Kia classes are about three to five minute videos where we show you how to do something with your Kia. Um, this one, I don't know if it'll be as popular as the last one, but uh, I think it'll be good. We do Kia classes twice a week. We do these uh, five days a week on weekdays, uh, these live in-depth things. And we'll do other videos as well. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hit that like button and we will see you again tomorrow.